The music industry today is remembering the life of Linkin Park lead singer Chester Bennington. He was 41 years old and the artist was found dead in his Los Angeles home yesterday. Authorities are investigating his death as an apparent suicide. Bennington helped Linkin Park become one of the most popular rock bands of the 2000s. So here with me now to talk more about Linkin Park and its frontman is Alan Light. He is a music journalist, an author, and also the host of Sirius XM radio show Debatable. Thank you very much for joining yes, us. Yes, thank you. So I think this was a blow for a lot of people. Uh, when the news sort of came across, I was watching the social media feeds, yeah. and people from all stripes were reacting shocked. I think that's what was really striking, yeah. was the range of reaction and yeah. kind of a reminder that Linkin Park really were for that generation kind of the last mega rock band yeah. that emerged. You know, this is a band that sold 70 million records and I think had the last rock record to sell more than 10 million copies, yeah. you know, for a certain, you know, within a certain age group, regardless of race or gender yeah. or whatever, this was your band. Because they had crossover yeah. appeal too. They did, uh, you know, a few uh, <laughs> songs with hip hop artists. And so there were people who probably would, would have never listened to Linkin Park became fans. Well, that's right. And we saw tweets yesterday from Rihanna saying, yeah. the best live performer I've ever seen on a stage. Yeah. And from, you know, lots of folks in the hip hop world. Yeah. But also, you know, Jimmy Kimmel, Gabriel Sidibe, lots of just people who were, again, of, of that age, mm -hmm. who were responding to somebody who, for them, was, you know, a very defining kind of a rock star. Mm -hmm. What was your reaction when you heard the news? Well, you know, you don't prepare yourself for something like this. It's, uh, you know, you never know. You, you try to impose something rational on an irrational decision. Yeah. Certainly this is, you know, somebody who had spoken at length about his own struggles with depression, about sexual abuse that he had suffered as a child. Mm -hmm. In the songs, you know, the, they were built around pain and alienation and anxiety. Yes. There was obviously a lot that was going on with this guy, but he had six kids, he was married. You know, you, you, you never know yeah. what's the thing that you're releasing into the work and what's what you're actually holding back and you go home with at night. That is so true. He was really good friends with uh, Chris Cornell. Yeah who also committed suicide. Um, many, many people were shocked. Chris Cornell, Audio Slave, and... Uh, and um, Soundgarden. Soundgarden, yeah. thank you. Um, you know, even when I get online, people are sort of making comparisons b between the two. Well, it was, yesterday was Chris Cornell's birthday. Mm -hmm. and He would have been 53. He would have been 53. Yeah. We'll never know what it was, you know, why did Chester do this? Why on this day? Yeah. You have to believe that he knew that it was Chris's birthday. He had sung at Chris Cornell's funeral just, you know, less than less than two months ago. Mm -hmm. They were close. Mm -hmm. So, you know, was was there a direct some connection between that? But on the other hand, you say, well, then he would have seen the outpouring that followed Chris's death yeah. and the way that people responded to that. And so wouldn't he have, you know, realized what it what it means yeah. to, to do something like this? But that's where when you're talking about depression, when you're talking about these sorts of issues, there's there's no way to know. Yeah, I mean, we've seen this before with rock and rollers. This is a, a familiar arc um, in terms of his legacy moving forward. How do you think people are going to remember him? Well, I think that, you know, you said at the beginning, the Lincoln Park represented sort of a moment of a new hard rock that took from hip hop and took from more industrial music yeah. and were able to make that more, you know, bigger and more of a pop sound. And they, they, you know, because he was the kind of singer he was, they had hits that were on pop radio. They had collaborations. They did an album with Jay-Z. Yeah. Uh, they took that sound. That's where I right. learned about them, really, and through Jay-Z. Yeah. You know, so they sort of took that extension of rock and roll and brought it onto this, this massive playing field. And I think, again, I, I don't think there's been a band since then that as a, you know, a rock and roll identified reached those kinds of heights. There was a poll that VH1 did maybe four or five years ago where their viewers voted them the greatest act of the 2000s. Mm. So people may not know Linkin Park, but know that this is a band that had that kind of reach, yeah. uh, you know, and again, introduced a sound and a spirit and these ideas and, you know, writing about these kinds of, of issues yeah. for a whole lot of people. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to be analyzing those lyrics uh, right now. They were supposed to go on tour. Do we know anything about that? The tour was supposed to start next week. They yeah. were playing a show at 
City Field Stadium next weekend with Blink-182 and the Wu-Tang Clan, yeah. and then we're going to head on a headlining tour of their own. There hasn't been a statement about that. Okay. I, you know, I can't imagine that they can go forward this soon, yeah. whether they will go forward over time. You know, that's for the band to figure out, but I, I don't see how you pick up the pieces next week and get on a stage. Exactly. Alan Light, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Emma.